Welcome to Game Science, a show where we put game mechanics and physics to the test to answer questions that gamers want to know. Today's question comes from Mr. Turpins, who asked, How fast can Sonic actually run? Well, hasn't this question already been answered? In Sonic CD, there was a radar gun that measured how fast Sonic was actually going. And even in Sonic Generations, Tails explained that Sonic could go so fast that he was able to bend space and time. Well, that's what we're here to figure out. If Sonic CD was correct, they claimed that Sonic could run 3,000 miles per hour. On the other hand, Sonic Generations claimed that Sonic could run fast enough to open or close rifts in space-time. And I'm sure Einstein would roll over in his grave right now if he thought a blue hedgehog could truly cross the einstein rose Podowski bridge. Well, if Sonic can beat an F-15 going Mach 5, although he may be missing a face, I will applaud his effort. But right now, I think we need to go and explain to the people that were growing up with Nintendo games what this guy actually is. So let's go ahead and dig into a little bit of biography on our little fast friend. Sonic the Hedgehog is a 4 foot, 77 pound little speed demon. Apart from long runs on the beach, he likes to eat chili dogs. He also has a counterpart, a doppelganger if you will. Retro Sonic is just a little bit shorter, about three and a half feet, but he's also a 77 pound dude. The main difference between this guy and the other guy is that our Retro Sonic seems to talk almost not at all. Well that's all well and good, but we came here to figure out how fast he grew up, not how much he enjoys wieners covered in meat. I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that, but let's go ahead and lay a few ground rules before we start our test. Let's go ahead and assume that the law of physics apply, unless we need to go ahead and break those rules to make the test work. Then we can just work them around as guidelines instead of actual laws. Okay, let's all assume that boost abilities and other speed enhancers don't count toward his overall speed, and just his top foot speed is what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and test with both Sonics, meaning retro and modern, in the game that we were just talking about oh so generously, Sonic Generations. It's the perfect testing ground for this kind of experiment. Sounds like a plan. I guess the first order of business is to get in game and see what Sonic can really do. To figure out how fast an object is moving, you first have to figure out how far they're going and how long it takes them to get there. V equals D over T, or velocity, which is speed, equals time over distance. Well, we're at a huge disadvantage when it comes to Sonic because we don't know exact distances, and guessing the distance of a level could throw off our end result. Now to fix this, there's a much simpler way to judge Sonic's speed. And then when you do a boost, I know speed boosts don't count for this, but we're using it as more of a baseline instead of an actual foot speed. When Sonic enters his boost, a mock cone appears in front of him. We can figure the speed he is traveling by using a mathematical equation, finding the half angle of a mock cone and plugging into this equation, sine of theta equals velocity of object over velocity of sound. But I'll save the fancy mathematics for a few more minutes and let Mike explain to you about the mock cone Sonic generates. The cone that appears around Sonic is called the bow shock, or the detached shock. In similar terms, it's when an object exceeds a maximum direction angle. This is normally seen on blunt bodies, but it can be seen on sharp bodies in low Mach numbers. Speaking about speed, I told you I'd finish the mathematical equation for you. If you use the equation I gave you before, sine of theta equals velocity of object over velocity of sound, all you would need is two pieces of puzzle to solve it, but the theta part is something that we'll have to look at. In this mathematical equation, theta is the half angle of Mach cone, so all we'll have to do is measure half of Sonic's Mach cone, and it comes out to be about 45 degrees. Now that we have that, we can solve the equation. I thought you needed two parts of the equation to solve it. We do, but luckily the speed of sound at sea level is a constant 331.1 meters per second. After plugging into the equation, we can compute sonic speed while boosting, and it turns out sonic is traveling at 1,729.78 kilometers per hour, which for my fellow Americans that don't use the metric system, that's about 1,074.83 miles per hour. Alright, so now that we have a general idea of how fast he's going with the boost, now we can figure out how fast he's going without it. Now to get an accurate reading, we're gonna have to get a nice flat surface for Sonic to run on. And guess what? The level select screen in Sonic Generations will do just the trick. So we'll boost from one end of the level select screen to the far right, timing how long it takes them to get there. And if you remember at the beginning of the show when I told you velocity equals distance over time, We'll use that equation to figure out how far we're going, and then do the same test again knowing the distance and calculate Sonic's normal foot speed. 
let's get started. Okay, now time for the results. Our experiment showed that sonic wall boosting is going 1074.83 miles per hour. Using that, we found out that the level select screen of Sonic Generations is 5,544.84 meters. Sonic while not boosting takes him 18.40 seconds to get there, to the end of the level, which is 301.35 meters a second, which turns out to be 674.10 miles per hour. Retrosonic takes 19.19 .19 seconds to get to the end of the level select screen, which is 288.94 meters per second which turns out to be 646.34 miles per hour. Well, even though Sonic's amazingly fast speed breaks most of the laws of physics, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm sure if he rips a hole in the fabric of space-time, the doctor will take care of it. Really? A Doctor Who joke? No, Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Hey, Scott! Well, thanks for tuning in and watching this episode of Game Science. Uh, do you feel like this episode may be a pile of horseshit? Well, that's okay, because we have a video that digs deeper into the science of the video game. But if you feel like you have a burning question that you feel like needs to be answered by a few intelligent people, I would try NASA, but Game Science is the next best answer. So go ahead and drop us a comment below, and we may just answer your question on the next episode of Game Science. 